Hello and welcome back to another Max MSP tutorial. I'm Andrew Robinson and in this video we are going to talk about JIT.Rota. I think I say this in pretty much every single video I've ever done, but JIT.Rota is the best object and I literally use it for everything, so it is absolutely worthy of its own tutorial. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? First we're going to create a new object and we're going to create the JIT.Rota by typing in Rota, which is R-O-T-A, and we're going to right click on it and open up the help file for a sec. And it's got this awesome example of uh, how JIT.Roto works. There's a video here, it's coming out through this patch cord into a JIT.Roto object, which is outputting to our P window, and we can click and we can drag around the offset X or the offset Y. Uh, there's the zoom where we can, you know, zoom it, stretch it. Uh, theta is for rotation. And you notice as I'm turning this, it's actually rotating from the top corner. So there's a lot here that we need to dissect. Um, and we're going to do that right with theta. So theta, you see, as I was turning it, it was in fact turning from the top left corner. And I'll change this number again, and we can see it's rotating. The reason it's doing it from the top left corner is because of our anchor point attributes. They are set to 0, 0, which is the first pixel in this entire matrix, which is in fact that top left corner. So if we wanted to set it to rotate around the center, we would just have to know what the uh, anchor point for the center is. And I actually don't know what it is for this video off the top of my head, but we can use this fun object called jit.matrixinfo to figure that out. And we're going to pass it through a route, and we're going to route out the dimensions of that matrix. Um, and it should tell us in this box, which it does in this message box, it's 320 by 240. That is the dimension size of this matrix. We use the jit.matrixinfo to figure that out, which means we can now set the anchor points to half of this value, and that will be the center of our video. So now anchor points are set to half our X and Y. And when we turn the theta, it is in fact rotating around the center now, which is super, super useful. Um, and you notice as we rotate, it's actually leaving these frames behind, which is a pretty cool effect, but maybe you don't want that. Uh, that has to do with this bound mode attribute. Zero is ignore, which, you know, it's going to ignore the frames that are beyond the bound. Um, if we want to get rid of those, we can set bound mode to one. And then it's like a free floating video plane inside the window, which is pretty cool, because then you can set zoom x to half, and our zoom y to half, and now it's like its own little window inside the .p window, and we can move it around and make a lot of cool effects that way. Uh, bound mode 2 is wrap, which is uh, pretty cool, because it, it wraps it around to the other edge. So if you zoom out like we have right here, you can get this sweet tile effect. Also, if you just set it to default, 1-1 one, one for zoom, um, then we can you know, scroll on the offset X and it will kind of create like an infinite scrolling effect the more we push this up, um, which we can do forever because that's how bound mode two works. Um, bound mode three is clip, which is not uh, as fun, but it's kind of interesting still. You can see that when the video extends beyond the edge of the, of the bound, it gets clipped and stretched out, which is pretty, you know, interesting for some purposes. Maybe there's a very good technical reason why you want to do that, or maybe you just like the glitchy aesthetic of it and you want to use that uh, somehow, which is totally possible. Um, and bound mode four is very similar to bound mode two, except instead of wrapping around the original video, it's going to mirror it. So you can get really cool mirror fractal effects and it works pretty much the same way. And over here in our reference pane of the JIT.Rota help file, there's all these other, uh, we actually have to be clicked on the JIT.Rota for that to show. Um, there's all these other attributes for JIT.Rota that we can mess around with and play with and uh, we'll modulate and uh, do some kind of do 2D transformation on our video plane in some way. So that's super useful. And with that, we're going to use this advice to help build our own um, drawing algorithm right now. Uh, first, we need a jit.window so we can see uh, our visual rendering uh, algorithm that we're going to create. And we're gonna say at floating one so that this window is floating and won't disappear when I click off of it. Then we're gonna patch the jit.rota into that jit.window. And since we're, we uh, we learned about this object last time, we're gonna use jit.noise and we're gonna say 10 by 10. So we will have a random 10 by 10 matrix of uh, beautiful colored squares as soon as we send this bang through with this button. Um, and there it is, that is our random jitter noise. So now we can do exactly what we just saw on the help file and we can press the A key on our keyboard to create some add or UI objects, patch them into the jit.rota, lock it, click it where it says nothing and see all those same attributes that we can now mess around with. So let's start with offset X and uh, Y. 
And as I move this number, you see actually nothing is happening. And this is a very important concept to understand. We talked about this in the intro to Jitter video. Uh, the reason nothing is happening anymore is because there's no bank. So this can't output its frame and therefore nothing's passing through these patch cords. If I click this button, you'll see, okay, we are redrawing our jitter noise matrix. So there is a bang now passing a frame through and it in fact did work. It's offset by six pixels. So it's over six squares right now. And that's where we're drawing. Um, but we don't want to have to click this button every single time to redraw these squares. And uh, maybe we don't even want to have to redraw the random noise. So there's got to be another way we can do this. And that's where the Jitta matrix object is going to come in handy. We're going to give it the same four char to default with, but we're going to upscale to a dimension size of 480 by 320. And now when we send this bank through, you see that upscale did in fact work because we're still offsetting by uh, six pixels, but this is now what six pixels look like in our 480 by 320 matrix. Um, and still things aren't working the way we intended. If we move this offset X, you know, we get a lot more of an offset now, but um, it, you still have to click that button for that bang to go through, which is not very convenient. So here's how we're gonna fix that. We're going to use the Metro object to send out a bang, which does so every uh, specified millisecond intervals. If we set it to 30, we're gonna get about 30 frames a second. And then we can also say active one uh, in the attribute settings so that this Metro is already on and ready to send out its bangs. And if we patch that into the jitter matrix, this jitter matrix is basically a buffer. It's, it, it is holding this jit.noise internally inside of it. And now we're just sending a bang just to that matrix. So it's completing only this part of the signal flow. And because it's constantly getting this bang from this metro, it is constantly outputting its frames through this patch cord now. And now when we move the offset X, we will see it is in fact offsetting in the X direction, which is super, super cool. Um, and similarly, if this was offset Y, we can move it in the Y direction. And just with this, we're already getting some kind of cool like etch-a-sketch noise uh, drawing algorithm effect. You could you could play around with just this for a long time. Um, but let's let's throw some more uh, random parameters and 2D transformations in here. Uh, so we're going to give ourselves a little bit of room. And then I'm going to take this jit.rota and I'm going to hard code into it the attributes for our anchor X, which we're going to do half of our x dimension so that's 240 because that's half of 480 same thing with anchor y we're going to do half of uh, 320 which is 160 so that's going to put it right in the center and then i'm also going to say bound mode uh, let's do bound mode one for right now and let's say zoom x is 0.5 and zoom y is 0.5 so there we go we now have a very small jitter noise window inside our greater window that we can uh move around freely just like we saw in that help file example, um, which is super cool. Let's bring some more parameters in here for our jit.rota to mess around with. Uh, let's uh, let's make some more outer UIs. Let's set this one to zoom X. Let's set this one to zoom Y. And let's make one more uh, to bring in the theta. Cool. So now that we've got all these attributes for our jit.rota that we can mess around with, we basically, uh, rather than clicking and, you know, moving these manually we just want to automate them somehow so we can do this we can use a random object and i'm going to say random 100 so we get random 100 values um and it's going to be 0 to 99 because it's one less than what we define because zero counts as a number so it's 0 through 99 but that's still 100 random numbers and we're going to say uh scale 0 to 99 to be between 0 and 4 80. So now if I patch the random into the scale, this scale into our offset X, we have our full X range uh, now available to us to offset in. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just copy this over and we're just going to change this 480 to 320 uh, for our Y range. And that's going to be great. So we've got that now. And now this just needs its own bank. So I'm going to create a new metro here for this. I'm going to say 500 milliseconds, but I'm also going to say active one. So it's just on and ready to go. And we're going to patch that right into there. And so there it is. And sometimes it draws off the edge. And I just realized that is because our anchor points are now set to the center. So we have to go negative 240 to positive 240 in order to have that full range. And same thing on the Y, it needs to be negative 160 to positive 160 because we're now offsetting from the center. So we can go both directions. Um, and that's pretty cool. Um, I don't like that. It's just jumping around though. I want it to like slide into place. 
So we can easily make that animation happen by using the line object because the line is supposed to slide from one number to the next. You just have to send it a list of what number we want it to go to, which we're going to define using the F uh, symbol in our pack object. And we're going to send it uh, a time value. We're going to do 500 because that's what our metro is set to. So now if we patch the scale into the pack, the pack into the line, and the line out to the offset x, we will start to see it will take exactly half a second, which is every time it's getting a bang, to slide to its new position. Uh, and that's pretty cool. And actually, watch this. If we set bound mode back to zero so it ignores it, it's going to leave behind those frames, which kind of creates a cool, interesting... Uh, generative pattern drawing effect already. Uh, so we're going to leave that at bound mode zero and we're going to take this, we're going to copy our pack and our line again and we're going to just patch that in there for our Y value as well. So now it is really sliding all over the place which looks super cool. Um, let's bring in some more effects. Let's create another random uh, pack line for our zoom X and Y which we're going to set to be between 0.1 and 1. We can't set it to 0 because if zoom X or zoom Y is on 0, it's going to be zoomed in so much you can't see it anymore. It's going to look like it's broken because nothing's going to happen. So that's uh, super important. We're, we're going to set our limit to just be 0.1 so that doesn't happen. And then we're going to patch the metro into that random object and that line is going to both the zoom X and Y so they get the same values and we see that is now in fact zooming around and uh, changing sizes as it moves which is super super cool. And last but not least, we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to change our scale range from 0 to uh, 3.14, which is pi and a full rotation for theta. Uh, and then we're just going to patch that in there. And we're going to see it start to rotate around and move and so much. And there's this is just the beginning. This is exactly uh, everything that you can do at a most basic level which is dot rota and just some helpful tips to understand exactly how you're going to make that work but there is still so much more we can do to this to uh, make it even cooler like if we wanted to change the speed that this was doing its drawing thing at we would just have to create a number box and just patch it into here for uh, this right inlet for the metro to change the metro time and then similarly into the right inlet for all our packs so that they are all also at the same time and everything is uniform and if we just do that we could say something like I don't know let's do a hundred and see how fast it goes okay that's pretty fast let's not do it that fast let's do a thousand which is just one second so it's gonna go a little bit slower uh, that's pretty cool maybe that's too slow let's do 250 that's fun that's a good one too uh, so yeah there's that we could do that we can also change the uh, or redraw our noise when we want if we want more colors in there we can change the dimension size of the jit.noise pretty easily. We're going to just use a message box to do that. We're going to say dim dollar sign one dollar sign two, which are our variables. Uh, so if we send the dim message a list now, uh, which we can do using the pack object and just define two integer variables in that dim message, uh, but it's got to patch into the message. We can do that, put that right there, uh, create some integer boxes, patch these into the pack give them some random values. Let's say, I don't know, let's uh, do 100 and one. I don't know what that's gonna look like. It's gonna look like that. Uh, and you can change, you know, all kinds of cool things about how this generates these patterns and drawings. Um, you know, there's also bound mode, uh, which might be interesting as another attribute to play around with. Um, there's literally so much to do. Uh, we can even, you know, in the same vein, take these random objects and draw new random uh, dimension sizes for our jitter noise matrix. So there's a lot of ways this could be expanded too. Um, and this is just the tip of the iceberg of jit.rota. Um, there's so much more that we can do with jit.rota and so many ways you can reuse it over and over again to do very valuable, very cool uh, visual effects in jitter and max MSP. So hopefully that was helpful to you guys. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. And if you did learn something, please like and subscribe. It uh, lets me know that I'm doing a good job with these. Uh, and I also really appreciate that. We're almost at 500 subscribers, which honestly, that just blows my mind. I can't believe you guys uh, are here and you support this and you are enjoying these sessions. So I'm definitely going to keep making these videos for you. 
and uh, we're gonna just learn all about Max MSP, and it's gonna be great. Um, I have so many more cool jitter tutorials in mind, and if anybody has any other tutorial requests, you can also feel free to leave those in the comment down below or send me a message, and I will, I will uh, definitely take it into consideration. If it's a good idea uh, and it's very easy to show in a tutorial, I will show it. So let's uh, see what those suggestions are too. Okay, awesome. I appreciate it all, and I will see you guys in the next video.